He's a politician, he's a lawyer, he's a father and a husband, and he loves to tweet. Now, Leon Stavronakis hopes to become the next mayor of Charleston. I spoke exclusively with him for a special edition of Quintus Close Ups. Let's address the big issue right here, which is the obvious, South Carolina State University. Sure. We've all heard the news about what happened over there, and we've heard the reaction as well. And I know that you actually reacted it on Twitter as well, quote, Closing SC State University, our state's historic black college, is not an option, and we will not let it happen. Tell me, when you put on your thinking hat, closing South Carolina State is not an option for you, but what is? Well, obviously, you know, the school has gone through a, a downturn in terms of uh, its financial standing, yeah. um, problems with it, maintaining its accreditation, declining enrollment. Um, and so there are problems there that have to be addressed. And, you know, what the legislature needs to do is find the right leadership team and the right assistance to that leadership team to get the school back on solid educational and financial footing. Um, I say that the legislature will not close SC State, and I believe that we would not vote to close SC State. But at the same time, if we don't fix SC State, it could close on its own um, by losing its accreditation, continuing to deteriorate. So the legislature has to be more vigilant than we have in the past about getting SC State the help that it needs. Um, and that starts with effective leadership. Um, I don't, you know, know how far that needs to go, but I certainly know that the current leadership team um, has not done what needs to be done up to this point. But I fully support the school. I will not allow um, or support myself, the legislature closing SC State down, but we do definitely need to do better as a General Assembly supporting South Carolina State and I'm going to do what I can to get them the help they need to not only reverse this downward trend right. but to prosper. And that leads me to a couple of yes or no questions. Sure. Yes or no, should SC State President Thomas Elsie resign? I think that that is something that we have to evaluate. The, the Legislative Black Caucus um, took a vote of no confidence right. in him. Um, I'm troubled by some of the things I've heard about the lack of responsiveness, about financials. Um, okay. You know, we need the, the subcommittee, I'm not on the subcommittee, but what I'm told uh, by the subcommittee members, including Representative Gilbert Cobb Hunter, right. Representative Jim Merrill and others, is that a lot of the information that they've requested in order to give an evaluation of what the actual financial situation there is and what needs to be done has not been forthcoming. That has to change in order to be able to evaluate um, the board's job performance and Dr. Elsie's job performance. So I would say this, the most important thing is getting SC State back to health. That is the most important thing. Whatever we need to do to get there, those options are on the table. And to me, that doesn't involve closing the school. I don't see how that Im improves their health. Yes or no? Should the state take over SC State? Well, the state does, you know, effectively right. Right. Um, have SC State as a state asset. And um, if we were to take a more direct form of control over the school, mm -hmm. I would think it would only be for a limited time. I don't think um, that any school could prosper long term with the General Assembly. Uh, running it or some government agency. It needs it needs to get uh, fixes in place that allow it to get back to health. That might involve a temporary period of time where it is run more internally than sure. most other schools, but I would view that as only a, a temporary thing. I think for it to flourish as an educational institution, yeah. it needs to be run like an educational institution, and that's not something that another state agency or the General Assembly are capable of doing long term. Should uh, South Carolina receive more money from the state? South Carolina State? Right. Well, I think all of our higher ed institutions need a better share of state funding and that's something we have struggled with as you know we deal with increasing competition for limited state resources. But the first step is getting the school healthy financially before we can talk about increasing their yearly budget or anything like that. We're going to have to pump some more money into the school to get them solvent okay. um, to eliminate this, these debts that they've accrued. Um, 
but the mentality of the legislature after this past year when we did uh, invest extra money trying to address debt um, is <clears throat> you have to show us what you did with the money. Right. And since they haven't produced, like I meant, mentioned a minute ago, those uh, receipts, right. those expenditures, the cash flow, both in and out of the university, it's hard to get to where the General Assembly is going to actually do that. But I know that to make the school uh, the great institution that it, that it can be, we will need to invest more in SC State. Following the murder suicide at USC, do you believe that they have some security issues? Um, you know, I don't know enough about what happened in order to say that they do or don't. I would certainly expect President Pastides and the board to make a very thorough evaluation of whatever the facts were of of that occurrence and to make changes that they deem necessary, keeping students and faculty and staff safe on campus has got to be an absolute top priority for all of our schools uh, in South Carolina, be they K through 12 or higher education institutions. Um, and so they need to make sure that they thoroughly evaluate what happened. And if there are lapses in security that contributed or if it could have been prevented in some way, they need to take steps to make that happen. So I don't know the answer, but I would fully expect them to find the answer out and if they need help from the legislature to report back to us. Let's move from SC State and USC to your own model college of Charleston. Sure. Uh, five days ago, tomorrow really, a bomb uh, really shut down the campus for a while to, for Dorothy to investigate what's going on. And I know you tweeted out something saying, quote, Think about thinking about everyone back at home at my mom, alma mater, CFC. Stay safe. I'm wondering when you heard that news, what did you tell yourself? Uh, I was afraid, um, you know, like anybody else. Uh, I was afraid for students and faculty and staff. I was afraid for neighboring residents and businesses in Charleston. Um, that's a scary situation, and unfortunately, we've seen way too many examples of terrible things happening on college campuses around the country. Um, I was able to talk to President McConnell on Thursday and he uh, indicated that there were some things that needed to be addressed in terms of uh, how they code and send out these messages yeah. and that he's working on making sure that that happens um, right away. Uh, like I said, it was scary. I mean, I was afraid for my hometown and for uh, all the people that live here and of course for my alma mater and all the students and people that work there. Yeah. Describe to me the following one word, Uber. Uber is innovative technology in transportation. It's, uh, it's, you know, certainly I think the present and a part of the future for transportation in terms of, you know, private transportation and how people access private forms of transportation. Gas tax. Gas tax <laughs> is a subject of debate in the legislature and something that I think we're going to address this year. I hope we are. Um, I'm very concerned about two things. You know, number one is the condition of roads and bridges in South Carolina. Um, and number two is kind of twofold the future development of transportation options for Charleston and the rest of the state, especially in our fast growing areas and whether the resources and actual structure at DOT are in place to meet those needs. I think we have the clear answer that the resources are not in place right. to meet those needs. But in addition to more resources, it's important that we make DOT more creative, more efficient, more responsive to the kinds of needs that South Carolina now has. Um, we're a much more diverse state than we were uh, in years past. I don't, I'm not sure I believe that DOT has become as nimble to handle that diversity as they should be. I think it's real important as we take on this gas tax debate, whether we should increase it or not, that we also uh, transform DOT into an agency that can, that can uh, provide the kinds of transportation answers that urban and suburban communities like Charleston need. We're not the same as we were we have a lot of challenges that are not being met by the DOT currently. Domestic violence. 
uh, a, an embarrassment for South Carolina and something that has to be addressed. Um, it's very important that we let the, uh, the women and children of South Carolina know that uh, our current leadership values their safety, values uh, the fact that they need to be respected sure. and treated with dignity and respect. Um, the current statistics in South Carolina certainly do not bear out that that's the case. And so the legislature needs to be serious about two things. Number one, making sure we have appropriate punishment to fit um, certain crimes. And number two, making sure that we are intervening with people at a young age, especially young males, and making sure that the kinds of options for education and treatment are there at a young age to break this cycle. Um, you know, you can't expect people who've learned a particular kind of behavior over the course of a lifetime to just break it because you increase a penalty. It takes an educational effort to break these kinds of, uh, of societal cycles that are not positive, and this is certainly one that has festered for far too long in South Carolina, and we need to treat the women and children of this state with a lot more respect than the statistics indicate we're doing now. Ethics. Ethics are critically important, and you know it's really, really important that we send a signal to the public that the business of government is just that public business, mm -hmm. not personal business, not monkey business, and you know, and we need to pass some improvements in our state ethics laws to make that happen. This is a drum I've been beating for a long time. Um, it started before the recent scandals even unfolded with Ken Ard and, and Bobby Harrell and, uh, and Nikki Haley. I mean, we you know, started with a comprehensive bill, um, I guess back in 2011 or 12, that did, never got off the ground. Um, but we're working now to try to to do something, the House the last two years, last year and early this year, passed ethics bills and sent them to the Senate. And the Senate needs to step up and find something acceptable and also meaningful and adopt it. And it's very disappointing what happened last year in the Senate and what's happened so far this year. You know, I wanted you to describe those particular issues in one word because you might be addressing one, most of those issues if you become the next mayor of Charleston right now. You know? well, it's impossible to address most of them in one <laughs> word, but I, I, I know I went well beyond no, that. But, it, you. but it's, uh, it's important to, to lay out your vision on those important issues, and uh, so no, did no the best I could. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank actually. you. Thank you. And you know, I'm wondering, what has it been like to be Leon Stavonakis over the past couple of days after the huge memorial mail announcement that is? Well, I mean, you know. I don't really look at it that way. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a, a great honor to even be in the conversation to, to succeed, uh, succeed Joe Riley, who's been an amazing mayor, done fantastic things for Charleston and really this entire region. Um, and the growth in Charleston has benefited the entire state. So his leadership really has been amazing and a benefit to all of South Carolina, but of course, especially those of us here in the Charleston area. It's been kind of crazy for the last couple of weeks. Um, very, very busy. Um, you know, serving as a legislator is an honor. I take that job seriously. A lot of times you see candidates announced for another office and they quit showing up to work right. as their current, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do my job because it's important to Charleston and because I committed to doing it and that commitment, the trust that people placed in me as a legislator is very important to me, and I've always been humbled by, by that, and so I take it seriously and will continue to do that. I also have a regular job that I use uh, to support my family, and that's very important uh, to me and, of course, to my family and to my clients, and so we're going to keep doing it. Also, it's an incredibly busy time, but I'm so energized and excited by it. It's, uh, it's an amazing challenge and opportunity for me to uh, take my service to the city of Charleston to an even higher level. I mean, there's no, nowhere where you can have a greater impact as a local leader than as mayor of Charleston. Um, it is the most important leadership position in the low country. And um, it, it's gonna be an amazingly busy year, but, but again, one that I'm very energized and excited about.
And speaking of announcement, as you know, Dick Elliott just dropped out of the race last week because he could really multitask. Um, what does that mean for you? Well, I don't know. It's still early. I mean, Dick's a great guy. He's, uh, he's you know, a super fella. He's been a supporter of mine over the years, and I've always appreciated that support. Um, you know, I think, you know, time will tell what it means, but obviously he had some support out there, and we'll... Uh, the rest of us in the race will certainly be jockeying to try to get Dick's support and or uh, a lot of the folks that supported him, right. you know, to uh, come on board with our team. And we've had an amazing two weeks of incredible support. The uh, reaction to my candidacy has been, you know, greater than anything I could have imagined. It's been fantastic. And uh, hopefully uh, having one fewer candidate in there, you know, will allow the field to kind of narrow out a little bit more and people to kind of make decisions on who they think the right person is. And you know, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Mayor Riley, I know he means a lot to meet you, that is. Yeah. And so much so that you actually said this on Twitter, quote, headed home from Columbia for Mayor Joe Riley's final State of the City address, hashtag history. Tell me why is it so important for you, Leon Stavrinakis, to be a part of that particular history? Well, you know, just, just to let the mayor know, you know, how much, uh, A, his vision and uh, leadership in the next year mean to Charleston, okay, because this is an important year for Charleston. I've been around the mayor a lot. He hasn't taken his foot off the accelerator right. at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, he's, he's working at, an, at a breakneck pace. To, uh, to deal with all the issues he outlined in his state of the city, but also in a way to uh, make sure that we acknowledge what an incredible run of public service he has given the people of Charleston and the surrounding region. You know, Joe Riley is an incredibly uh, visionary, transformative leader, and he could have been doing anything in life, you know, that he wanted to do. He could have been an incredibly successful person in the private sector. He could have moved on to what some would consider bigger political jobs, right. but he dedicated his entire you know, adult life to serving Charleston and of course served us very well. And it's not too much to ask of someone like me, who my whole life has been with Mayor Riley as the leader of Charleston, to say thank you for everything it's meant to me and my family by driving home from Columbia to hear him give that vision and and uh, outline Charleston's work for the last time. I felt like it was an appropriate thing for me to do. Quickly, uh, finish these sentences for me. I-526 must be finished because? Because Charleston's uh, current and future transportation situation will be an absolute disaster without it. We cannot continue to grow and prosper and enjoy the amazing quality of life that we have here without finishing 526. It's been part of our regional plan for over 30 years and a lot of the growth that we've experienced has been planned with the anticipation of it being finished and anyone that doubts that it needs to be finished needs to take a stroll down Savannah Highway, San Wurttemberg Boulevard, Main Road, Folly Road oh, yeah. during uh, peak traffic times. I mean Savannah Highway it's all it's 24-7 almost right. now you know other than you know after midnight or, or you know, those kind of hours, but from the morning all the way through rush hour, it is basically a parking lot. So Charleston's future is dependent on 526 being completed. Having a downtown West Ashley is. I'm sorry? Having a downtown West Ashley is. It's important for West Ashley to be uh, developed further, um, especially the commercial areas need to be uh, re renovated, renewed. Um, the transportation corridors need to be improved, both in how they look aesthetically and how traffic moves through them. Um, and it's good for West Ashley to have its own heart um, so that, you know, people don't feel like they have to get in their cars and add to traffic going downtown or to North Charleston, that they have local uh, West Ashley options, much like people have in Mount Pleasant, right. North Charleston, and people who live on the peninsula, have all those options in their own area, and it's important for West Ashley to have them too, uh, both because it's good for business, but also it's good for the community, it's good for property values, it's good for quality of life across the region for people to have those options close to home. 
the uh, International African American Museum will be? It will be completed. Yeah. It will be finished um, at some point. I don't know the timeline. I think a lot of it depends on how much Mayor Riley's able to get done in this last year. Um, but it's something the next mayor needs to be committed to, and I certainly would be. Um, it's important, and Mayor Riley outlines this as well as anybody could, to tell that story of the contributions of African American uh, history and African Americans to American history, right. and to especially to the history of South Carolina. And Charleston has played such a central role uh, in African American history in the United States, that this is the appropriate place for that, and and I'm just can't thank him enough for taking on a challenge like that, and and dedicating so much of himself and so much of his passion and energy to seeing it done. I think it's an important project and one that I would certainly be committed to completing if I were elected mayor. And uh, you are a politician. You are a dad, a husband, a active tweeter. <laughs> yeah. What is? How can you describe yourself in one word? In one word, I would hope it's humble. Yeah, you are. You know, um, I hope that people think I'm humble and competent and honest with with them. Those are a few of the words that I would think are important. Sure. But more than anything, you know, I want to be loved by my wife and yeah. kids, and I feel like I am, and I feel like I'm so blessed uh, to have that in my life. I've got. To, I'll tell you. A great family. Um, my sisters, my brother, uh, my wife, her family, mm -hmm. and my kids. I'm incredibly blessed, and I've, you know, been part of a great church all my life. That's good. And now I've kind of, kind of merged into my wife's church as well. Mm -hmm. And so I've got those, both of those extended families going as well. And regardless of politics, I lead a blessed life, and um, I try to stay humble about all the great things I've been able to do, including public service. And if I'm able to be mayor of Charleston, that would just be the most incredibly humbling and, and honoring uh, event that anyone could ever ask for. It's, like I said, the greatest public service job in this area, and I think in the state of South Carolina. But regardless of that, I feel blessed and, um, and will have a happy life as long as, as long as my family continues to love and support me. So that's the most important thing going. And speaking of which, you know, I have been talking to a couple of people over the past couple of days after your announcement for mayor, and they basically say, hey, this is Leon's race to lose. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, not a, not a single, <clears throat> of course, vote has been cast yet, and I, I think, you know, it's important when you're doing this kind of thing to remain grounded. Uh, I'm flattered that people might view me that way as someone who is a serious contender for this. But we don't intend to take anything for granted. We're going to work hard this year on this campaign, and I'm going to work to earn every vote that I can in Charleston. I don't take anything anything for granted, um, whether it's financial support or, or the vote, both of which obviously you need to win, most right. importantly the vote. Right. And we intend to work hard for every one of uh, those votes out there in Charleston. We won't get them all, of course, but the goal is obviously to get that 50 plus one. Right. And um, it will, if we don't get it, it won't be for taking anything for granted. It won't be for arrogance, lack of humility, um, or for lack of effort. We're going to work hard and it, exhibit to people the kind of leadership I think they know this city needs. This is a big job now. Joe Riley's success has made this a big, big job. It's not a job for, for untested leadership. And I believe I've proven um, that I'm a capable leader that I work in a bipartisan way, right. that I'm open and honest, and that I'm good at solving difficult problems. And we're gonna have some expensive, difficult issues to deal with in Charleston in the future. And we need a hands-on mayor who's focused on issues that affect people's lives, traffic, transportation, education. Um, and those are just a few quality of life issues that are going to be impacting Charlestonians in the coming years. And so we're going to work hard to show people that we've got the right approach and ideas to deal with those issues. That is awesome. Well, Leon Stavonakis, this is so great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Quentin. Appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank you. I appreciate that.